Morning everyone, my name is Dale Dufay. I'm gonna do this montage of time-lapse videos we did. Uh, we started them on September 30th and the last one is November 12th. Uh, here, this is after we stripped the trailer down to the bare metal and got rid of all the flooring and contaminated insulation underneath it. And by doing so, we exposed the framework and decided to incorporate the lumber into the metal framing and then put the sheathing, tongue and groove, three quarter inch sheathing on top of it and screwing them all together, basically integrating all of them, you know, making it very solid. And uh, you could see that we had, the big thing is we were actually able to gain more clearance by doing so because the original floor had two by six framing that laid on top of the framework and making the clearance very uh, minimal inside the trailer. And by doing this, we gained six inches. And once the floor was in, it was safe to remove the drywall ceiling on, uh, you know, and the insulation because the previous floor before we took it out was very dangerous and rotten and uh, you know, susceptible to breaking through and actually falling through, which we did a few times while we were removing it. But once it was safe, we were able to get the drywall down, which was very easy in the insulation, keep it nice and clean uh, and you know, get rid of that smelly, contaminated insulation. Uh, and once we did that, there was insulation that was sandwiched between the rafters and the roof uh, with plastic, fiberglass, and then plastic. That's uh, like, a, like a quilt, if you will. So I had to uh, meticulously cut with a sharp knife uh, between each rafter and remove and keep clean as we go all the plastic and insulation, which also was contaminated. Uh, it was very, it all had to go because it held an odor, there were rodents, even up in the ceiling there were uh, evidence of rodents up there, uh, which are very smelly. Here, continuing the removal of the insulation, which was quite uh, tedious indeed. I think right here I cut my finger real bad and that's why there's a pause. Uh, got back to work and re finished removing and sweeping as we go and keeping it all nice and clean. You can see how dirty and contaminated it is. And then once we were finished with that, there was the weather was allowing us to do the siding. So we got we're preparing the side. This is the east side of the trailer. We're relocating the window on the right to make sure it's centered above the kitchen sink. And then getting it all re pre prepared by removing the windows and doors. Here that's all ready to go. We started the wrap, uh, which was, we were fortunate that it wasn't windy that day and we were able to get the wrap on really good and tight which is essential. Then you cut out the window openings and door openings and put the windows back in, the door back in, uh, which is the way to do it. And then once we did that, it was pretty airtight. We weren't expecting to do the siding. Uh, so we started on the plumbing wall, uh, which was important and quite complicated because we had to incorporate the vents, the two inch vents. And then of course there's a four inch stack that goes behind the toilet and that goes up through the roof. You can see all the parts we had to use uh, to integrate all the si uh, vents. Here, Mary's taking time cleaning between the studs from floor to ceiling with the vacuum cleaner uh, because, of course, it was once we removed the insulation, there was all kinds of, of you know, debris and whatnot behind and between the studs. So she got that all nice and clean. And we weren't expecting to get anything done on the addition part here. This is on the this is the, uh, the north end of the south, or basically the west, north end of the addition that's on the west side of the trailer. And then in order to do it right and wrap it right, we had to remove the old seal, uh, siding and whatnot uh, down to the sheathing. And then we got back inside and working on the vent. Uh, this is the vent piece that has to go up over the door from the kitchen sink, which is uh, below the window on the left. And we had to put that two inch a piping up over the door and have it tie in, as you can see on the right there, tie into the main stack. Uh, so that we had to get that all done. You know, I've had so many people tell me you don't need to vent the plumbing like that, but you most certainly do. Every sink, every tub, every toilet, every everything with water drain has to be vented. 
in order to pass code. So that should tell you something. Here we're still working on the venting. There's, it's more involved to do the vent, plumbing vents than it is the actual drains. And of all the drains and everything are done and completed underneath the floor. So here we're getting the venting all done, the main stack up. We're tying in the vanity vent and bathtub vent into the main stack along with the kitchen sink vent. And you can see on the upper part of the stack there. Uh, so we're once that was done, we were able to complete the studs uh, that went you know, we had, we did it like for the bathtub, we did it just so, so we can get the faucets in there and the, and the shower head and whatnot in there and putting in the cross braces to hold uh, the faucet for the bathtub and the shower head. And then we were able to complete the wall, two by six wall, uh, plumbing wall, we call it. And here's the construction of the wall for the closets. Uh, the one main wall for the master bedrooms up already with the closet opening and the door opening. And then I'm doing the second bedroom wall with its closet door opening and putting it up and then making sure there's 25 inch, you know, space between them. Here's a little wall that separates the two closets. Each room gets its own closet. Uh, once it's complete, it'll be 24 inches deep uh, by almost five feet wide. It's pretty nice. This wall is the adjacent wall to the bathroom on the plumbing wall and also the second bedroom. Uh, once we got it completed, we had to put the tub in, as you can see on the left there, and then place the wall and mount it into the floor and ceiling. Uh, so th that's done right. And we got all the studs just so for the shower tubs around. Here we're doing the hallway wall, getting the floor and top plate laid out. Um, we got to make sure you get all the studs on center. As we're doing there, we're marking all the center, 16 inches and getting all the top plates and header for the door openings all laid out. And then here you can see we before we started the deck there, we had to get the cinder blocks all laid out. They were all messed up. We had to take them all out, uh, level the ground underneath it and compact it and put all the cinder blocks back in uh, before we can even complete the deck. So that was quite involved. It seemed like everything you did, you had to do all kinds of prep work first. Uh, here we're getting the ledger board done for the deck and uh, we had to do that just so it's underneath the door you had to fasten it to the building so it could be flashed uh, there we're using the brown flashing here we're working on fastening the board it wound up being like eight feet long by six feet wide so we had two ledger boards we had to get them fastened really good onto the building and then flashed as you could see with that brown flashing there which goes behind the siding and over the ledger board. And once that was done, we were able to get the deck going. We got the outside uh, boards going that hold up the joists that are 16 inches on center. We're using two by eight lumber treated, uh, which is adequate. Uh, sometimes codes require two by 12s, but we're using two by eight or two by 10. Uh, or actually that's two by eight, sorry which is more than enough. Usually these two people use two by sixes, but we wanted to make sure it was solid. Once the decking was done, um, we started the steps. You have to calculate them just so, so every rise is exactly the same. And you, then you have to make sure that it's all uh, properly calculated. And you have to count the deck as a step. There were actually four steps, but when you calculate, you have to calculate five steps, the deck being the fifth step. And so each rise was like six and five eighths inches high, uh, exactly. So that's the way you have to custom make your decks. And then once the, uh, you know, we were able to, once the deck was completed, we did worked outside whenever we could when the weather was nice. Uh, so once that was done, we were able to get inside and continue on the hallway wall. And if you notice, there's no headers over the doors uh, other than a two by four and the short studs above it. Uh, because it's not supporting anything, you don't have to get crazy. Uh, you know, I've, I used to do a lot of basements and you don't need to do that in the basements either because basically those walls are just holding up the drywall and any electrical or plumbing inside, that's it. They're not supporting anything. Uh, just like these walls are not supporting anything. Uh, it's so you don't need any headers. That's a common mistake that carpenters use, they just, uh, traditional framing requires headers above all the door openings and window openings, but here we don't, you don't need them. 
uh, so I didn't put them in. And here we're completing the wall. We had to do stud by stud. We weren't be able to uh, build the wall on the floor because there was no room. So we had to go stud by stud and make sure everything was just so. But once you get the top plate and floor plate marked out just right, then it goes pretty well. You don't even have to really plumb it plumb it because it just automatically comes out just right uh, so they were getting it completed up over the bathroom and then up to the furnace then when the weather com permitting we got back outside and started the siding first thing you have to do is put up the pink insulation you make sure that you do it all in one piece unfold it as one piece uh, they're three feet high so we'd only go you know we stopped at that point so we can get up to the siding up to there and then continue it. We had to do the full outside corner because we had the vinyl piece we had to put up first. That's the first thing you put up on the vinyl siding or any siding is the outside and inside corners. Uh, so once that was done, we were able to uh, start with the starter strip, which has to be just perfect. If it's not, then you're going to have problems here with the siding. So everything has to be just so. That's why it's very time consuming. So once the corner was up, we were able to uh, get started on the starter strip on the bottom. There's the starter strip. It had to be just so, perfectly level. And uh, this was the very first area we started, so it had to be like that all the way around. Uh, notice the really nice access panel we made to the crawl space. Um, that's insulated, uh, like five inches thick. Uh, the door because the whole skirting is all insulated with cement board on the outside and here you can see we're working the siding up to the top of the pink uh, at which point we would stop and then here's the north side of the of, of the trailer we're, so we wanted to get that course uh, caught up with the east side there's the starter strip going it had to be exactly the same as the other side and then once you get your first piece going notice how we step the seams um, each one is less. That's the most economical way to do it. It doesn't seem like it, but it is. And it's also the proper way to do it. Um, and here we're getting the inside corner done. And it has to be done first. And we have an outlet there. We have to put the outlet plate on. And then those pieces, those short pieces, have to line up exactly with the, op, you know, the pieces on either side of the door. Everything has to line up because once you get around the whole house if you don't line it all up perfectly then the last corner the, the siding is going to be off um, so here we are again on the east side notice all the uh, tape around the window flanges that tape was very high quality tape uh, so what, you, you know get that on and then the pink insulation along with that house wrap uh, you're talking about an airtight building and this building surely is because of that and here we're getting caught up with the pink on here on there uh, along with the other two sides because uh, you, again you want to keep it all even we, I wanted to get all the siding up as far as we can reach I never dreamed we'd even be able to start the siding let alone uh, get this far with it at this point uh, so we're here we are getting started we got the ledger on for the back deck we got a plaque on there for all the cable wires and then we, once that was in we were able to start the siding uh, and get get it going and then there we're going on that side, see why we have to unfold a piece and keep it one piece as much as possible. Obviously, they're only so long when you buy them at the store. But that's the important thing is making sure it's all one piece. And then, of course, we had to get that side started just so. Because if you didn't, if you got up over the door and they didn't line up, you got problems. Um, and see how we go over the windows with this pink and then cut the windows out and that way you're keeping it all one piece and that makes a huge difference believe me and it's also economical and notice how we're stepping the seams on the siding that's important uh, not only does it look uh, good it's uh, the proper way to do it and it's also the most economical way uh, it might not seem like it but very few uh, do-it-yourselfers do that uh, but you see how each piece has to be perfectly level and the nails, you got to do them just so you can't bury them too far. You got to keep them loose so the vinyl siding has the ability to expand and contract. Uh, so it's very, really kind of tricky. You got to keep each course on each side of the windows exactly the same as all the others. 
uh, because if you went up over the windows, you'd have problems. Uh, here we are back on the north end where the house address is. Uh, that was pretty tricky, uh, putting the J channel around that and the siding around it along with dealing with the windows and whatnot. Uh, so we're on the second course of the pink and we're going as far as we can reach. Uh, and then until at that point, you know, once we get as far as we can reach, then we set up a plank or a ladder. Uh, here it was just a ladder because it's just the sections between the windows. And here we're running the second course of pink on the east side. Uh, and, or sorry, this is the west side. And uh, getting as far as we can reach. Notice the steps, step on the seams. Uh, it's generally every 16 inches or each, you know, each seam is on the next st stud uh, that's there. And then you have to make sure to mark around the windows just so. And then making sure you're nailing it right. Making sure each side of the windows is just so and level and lining up with all the other ones. That's why you have to do it all together. Here we're getting the top course of pink on so we can get the siding all the way up to the fascia. And here we're getting around the door, getting that little inside corner, making sure each piece lines up with the adjoining pieces on either side of the doors and windows. Here we're back on the east side. The weather was really nice. We were taking advantage of it. Uh, again, we never dreamed we'd even get started on the siding, let alone get this far at this point. Uh, so here we're getting it all the way up to the top of the first course of pink insulation. And these windows are larger because they, they, by code, each bedroom had to have an escape window. So these windows are much larger uh, than the rest of the windows. And they turned out really nice. We really like these windows. And here we're doing the second course of pink and running the siding up as far as we can reach. Uh, getting the J channel. These windows, we had to put a J channel around because they weren't built in like the other ones. The other windows had like built in J channel. And here again, you got to make sure each course lines up with the course adjacent to the window uh, all the way around. Here we're still on the east side, uh, getting all the siding up to the second course, upper top part of the second course of pink. Uh, here we're going to we're cutting the top course of the pink up to the fascia and getting up. See how if you don't line up around those windows, uh, just so you're, the piece that goes up around the window is not going to line up. But, of course, if you do it right, they will. And so you know, we managed to be, uh, you know, take uh, care in doing that, so it turned out really nice. So here we're, again, this is the south end. See, there was an uh, overhang there on the gable. We had to actually put up a 12-inch wide soffit up there before we can complete the siding. So we got the soffit all done nice vinyl white soffit and so we were able to complete the uh, siding all the way up to it so with that i thank you for watching and we'll talk at you later